we're about to be going collectively and spiritually, um, especially when it comes to the light work. <clears throat> that's the reason that I picked this card because it's about teamwork. Usually when this comes out in a reading for me, sometimes it'll have something to do with somebody at the workplace or a situation at the workplace. But I look at it as teamwork, people coming together, you know, like like me and you and, and other people teaming up and doing the light work together because we're moving into right. a phase collectively where it's not just going to be about, oh, my ego, my ego. You know, it's the light work. We got to come together and work as a team. So that's why I chose this card. Well, and I like this card a lot. Like you said, the teamwork, you can't build something great. Like I think of a skyscraper. It's like, go try and build that alone. Yeah. You're not going to be able to build it. I think that it's important because it spiritually is the one card that shows that you have to learn to get along with other people. Mm -hmm. And I like it because if you think of like two people, like a relationship, yeah, that's one thing. If you learn to get, have your relationship, that's great. But how powerful can it be when you're also in a relationship and then you start to work with others too? Mm -hmm. That's what builds communities. That's what builds bigger things in life. And I always feel like that's like the problem in manifesting is like when you're not in a space to where one, you can even have a relationship with anybody yourself, mm -hmm. and then you're already having trouble connecting with others. And then I think it's kind of like pie in the sky to think, yeah, I'm going to go create this great thing in my life by myself yeah. only alone mm -hmm. you only get so far just by yourself yeah you don't really get to where you can make the truest open experiences or or visions or your manifesting dreams possible without that collaboration element mm -hmm. you know yeah that's a, that's a big part of the actual manifestation path because i've had people in the past whenever i spoke about something that i manifested try to say oh you didn't do that <laughs> you know you and you had to have all this help and i'm like well of course that's part of right. the path on the path i'm not saying that i called out to the universe and and the invisible sky daddy reached down from the clouds and helped me out i'm saying that on the path i attracted everybody i needed to help me bring my dreams into fruition. That's a whole that's the whole part of it. Right. So that's that I think trips people up when they when they think about creating something or manifesting something. It's not just you that figures out how to do it all by yourself. The universe will bring you every person that you need. And you have to you have to be able to to, to listen to that call too. Especially somebody like me who off camera, I've said this a hundred times, I'm very introverted. I'm not really big on talking to strangers that I don't know. I'm not really big on on like reaching out and collaborating with and working with people I don't know. So even for somebody like me, it's super hard whenever I feel called to go talk to this person, you know, go reach out to that person, do this. And it's like, ah, uh, that feels weird, but okay, you know, it's part of the path. And 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 I mean, that's been my entire path. You know, the universe will bring me to the location and then bring the people in. And, and that, that's, that's the way it goes. If you're, you're going to get in your own way and fuck yourself over if you try to do it all by yourself. Yeah, because I feel like if you just do it by your own self, I, I, I love the card because it's, it's not like they're just making just some random thing. Especially in the Rider Waite, it's, it's a sculpture. But it's also, I think, more than the sculpture. It's like, could be the history of it, could be the... But if you were to think of a sculpture, it's like, well, maybe you're good at making the materials. Another person's good at actually sculpturing it. And another person might be like, hey, I'm the one who was able to get the whole deal done to have us being able to have a sculpture in here. Like there's so many different parts of life that you need to have connection with in, in, to build anything great. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like the light work, that's where it's at. We all talk about this new earth to create. Well, a new earth ain't going to be created by one person. Yeah. And I think that's the big shift I feel. And it might be a little controversial, but that's my own personal view is like, I think that's kind of the weird thing about religion kind of always puts an idol up of, mm -hmm. of who represents God yeah, and that they're the savior of the whole mm -hmm. world. And then they're, I guess the savior to bring you back to the one, you know, heaven that there is or paradise mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that sometimes I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I do feel like that we're moving much more into a collaborative, much more universally powerful spiritual. I, I mm -hmm. still feel like the individuality of our lives is so crucial and will be. I don't think we're moving into some sort of crazy, like 
15 minute city future. I mean, I think a lot of people are afraid of that, but I think that people have to drop the fear mm -hmm. because one of my favorite movies growing up was the great escape, which was about escaping out of a prison that the Nazis were in control of. And they all dug a hole together underneath the fence with Steve McQueen. And it's a great movie, it's a very simple movie, mm -hmm. but when you get a bunch of people together in a jail, you're going to find a way out of that fucking jail. And I feel like as light workers, instead of maybe looking like this is jail, whatever the dark's trying to do to always do things together, three of pentacles is like, you know how to do that. And you know how to do that. And you know, like, what happens if we throw all that together? Oh, that's where you get the answers to things, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, going back to what you were saying about, um, you know, people believing that there's some higher being that's going to come save everybody that, that that's not, to say that there aren't higher beings, you know, who are ready to come help us. But the key word is help. They're not right. going to come do it for us. They're not going to come save us. They're not going to come fix everything. They're watching and waiting for us to come together in unity. Then they'll come help us. You know, right. I think that's the, that's the, it goes back to that God complex, that, that worship gene that, that we all have in us that, I don't know. I think mine's turned off, but, but that makes people in some way want to worship something outside of themselves. And, and it's, it doesn't work that way. They'll come help us, but we all have to stand up and come together before they come help us, you know? Yeah. And I feel because pentacles deal with what we're actually doing in this reality. Sometimes it can also deal, of course, with the inside of our self-worth. If I look at it from the inside though, you have, your highest self-worth is when you're also seeing the self-worth of somebody else outside of yourself too. Because I feel like a lot of people, if you focus too much on your own self-worth and then you think everybody else sucks. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, I mean, I, I know we're all victims to that, right? It's really mm -hmm. easy to be like, look at all the sheep. Yeah. Like that's, that, that, like I'm, I've said that, I don't know. I can't count. I've said it a lot. But... That's, I think, a frustration that we all have. The worst is when we take it out, like on, I used to, I don't do this anymore because I've finally woken up to, anytime I'm dealing with a customer service person on the phone with some issue, it's like, what do you mean? Get your manager. Da, 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 da. When I, especially I was younger, I would do that a lot. Yeah. And it's like, okay, hey, like now it's opposite. I think actually since 2020, when I'm like, people are more willing to talk. I'd be like, so how are you feeling? You know, like, oh, how do you feel about the world right now? Oh, it's crazy. You know, on the other side, I've, I've heard more of the most unique, interesting perspectives in these positions. So I feel like if you can internally think of self-worth, to me, it's when you're actually robust enough to be, where does that robust energy meet with other robust energies mm -hmm. to come together? Because I feel like the physical part needs to be internalized, but that's where I think that three is a powerful three to me. The three of pentacles to me is that really awesome three. Cause it's like, I'm taking that power that I know within myself and seeing it with others. It's, it, I don't think it's about seeking cause they're already in the arrangement of it happening. But I think there is the universe bringing people together too. There's a really high spiritual part of like, I don't know situations you and I've been going through lately. It's like, Oh fucking, you know, that person, that person knows that mm -hmm. person. And then collabs just like naturally happen. So there's more of that than I think the seeking when you let go and you let your vision of what you want to create, you know, your value and you're also open and willing to watch the universe, bring people together that can make great shit. That's where, this card, I feel like, is that understanding of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and especially in the spiritual community. And, and I mean, I, I fall victim to this sometimes, too, where it's really easy to get trapped in your own little bubble world and look <laughs> at other people and see what they're good at. And, and, and I'll be thinking to myself, man, I'm just an idiot. I don't know nothing, you know, and get caught in that bubble world. But it's like, what, we, we can't be comparing ourselves to other people. What we do is we say, okay, this is what I'm good at. Now, this is what you're good at. This yep. is what you're good at. Now, let's come together and let's put our strengths together. Instead of worrying, you know, because, I mean, if you're a true intuitive, uh, I, I don't know if you ever feel this way, but I get to feeling this way a lot. Like, 
what everybody tells me I'm so gifted for, I feel <laughs> like it's just common fucking sense. Right. Because I live in my own bubble world. Again, very introverted, very to myself. I don't don't really connect with many people in the outside world at all. So it's just in my own little world all the time. It just feels normal to me, you know, getting intuitive downloads about a person. I can, you know, walk right next to a person and immediately intuit their whole energy. And to me, that's just common sense. And then I get kind of, sometimes Leah has to remind me that, no, that's most people aren't like that. <laughs> so, so when you, when you get to, to think, you know, there's nothing special about me. And then you look at somebody else that's like case, for example, mm -hmm. his, his ability. I mean, I, I have the ability to pull the frequencies in and play with it, but he is so gifted to where he can just look at you and put his hand up and just send that energy through your whole body. And it's like, dude, I wish I was good at that. And then I told him that, and he's like, well, actually, I, I kind of feel like it's a little bit stupid. And I'm like, huh. I say, well, I feel stupid for being known as a tarot reader. Right. So so I think we kind of all fall into that a little bit. Do you ever experience that? Yeah. I mean, I would say that that's very much a good description of this card is like, you know, it's almost like, why do you need me? Kind yeah. of energy. You know what I mean? But then at the same time, you also know within yourself, like, no, I know I'm good at this, but like, we can't ever see until others see it within us mm -hmm. too. Right. So like with case, for example, it's like that. I would say it's like, you know, people are putting too many, I think terms sometimes to things like he's just a fucking divine quantum fucking healer yeah. and light worker and teacher. And right. So it's like, we're all these things combined Yet there's certain moments of things that need to come together that we build the best things from where we might think it's like, well, yeah, I mean, I know how to do this. Like, for example, like I'm really good with technology, right? So it's like, to me, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. But to others, they're so happy, like, oh, like you have a different angle right now with the fucking thing and you're able to do this. And right now it was just me and you and there's nobody else around, right? And I can figure that out. Mm -hmm. and remote do this here and do that but like to me that's fun and easy and it's not that big a deal but to others it might be like fucking thank god you're here oh my god mm -hmm. yeah and it's like oh yeah that's easy but that's what makes the light work so awesome is is getting your own ego out of the way because i think this is where this card can be controversial is like when you want to be seen for what you think your gift is, yeah. but it might not be needed at that moment, right? right? Like, to be, yeah. right? Like maybe I need to be around for the technology. Maybe it's not my astrology, even mm -hmm. though most people would be like, how are you not using them? I, it reminds me in sports. It's kind of like, why is my fucking favorite player on the bench? Yeah. You know, it's like, well, I mean, he is fucking better at this moment right now to kind of just sit on the bench and get the team pumped up because whatever, mm -hmm. whatever the situation might be, right? Like people get... I think the expectation of how others need to see them. Yeah. And that's where I think the block comes, especially because you usually block projects where you're like, I only want to be seen as team leader. So nope, won't take the job. It's like, well, then how's yeah. the light work cold thing going to work mm -hmm. out too good? I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's that, that <clears throat> looking at somebody from the outside. Cause I get a lot of clients that, ask me things like, what are my gifts? And I'll be like, well, I don't know. What, what do you want to do? What do you feel called to do? And I'll get questions like, should I try reading the tarot? And I'm like, why are you asking me? If you feel called to it, do it. If you feel like I had a client about three or four days ago who says that, you know, she's just so drawn to it. She's so obsessed with it, but she's afraid. She's overthinking it. She's getting in her own way. I'm like, dude, the first thing you have to do is don't worry about how you want to be seen, you know, especially in the spiritual community. One thing that I'm seeing right. now, man, the, the, the spiritual community is so saturated with people who just want to be famous I know. For, for no particular reason. So if you're a real light worker and you're here on mission and you're really wanting to do the damn light work, you have to stand out in the crowd. So that's what we're up against. Right. So I tell everybody, if you really feel like you got a genuine, and you'll feel it, it's a fucking fire that burns in your soul. It keeps you up at night. Like you have a message you want to put out there. Fuck what anybody thinks about it. You know, fuck who it pisses off. And I get people in my inbox every day who are pissed off about the things that I say on the internet. I don't give a fuck. You got to scream it authentically and unapologetically at the top of your lungs 
because you're up against all these people who just, I just want to be known as an awakened spiritual person. And I'm going to repeat all the cute little fluffy phrases that everybody else says that make me look so cute and awakened, you know, and it, and that, that those people in the year of the dragon 2024 are going to fall off. Yeah. You bring a great point because I feel like trying to fit in does the opposite. Yeah. Like if you were to go to some place and try to be what you you think, especially it usually comes from like not the fucking divine spiritual mind, not a thought out one, more of a subconscious because it's receiving kind of like on TV, right? Like, well, that looks good. So I'll do exactly what that is, right? So it's like, if you go to, especially in light worker community, I'm going to go to a conference and everybody is doing this. So I'm going to do it too. Everybody's meditating right now. So I'm going to do it too. Yeah. It's like, where, where's, you know, if you actually look through history at every spiritual culture, it's like if they were going to actually look at somebody who's considered a guru or a teacher, they're always doing it their own way. Mm -hmm. And, and the best in life is like when people show up and I think that's what triggers people, whether, you know, anything from politics to anything, it's like anybody who's doing this, like, Hey, I'm going to do it this way. And it's a little different. Mm -hmm. To me, that's always gold. Like, I always feel like, I mean, you're a musician. And so it's like, I'm a musician. There's something about, man, I like when somebody's doing something fucking a little different. Mm -hmm. Not following the crowd, mm -hmm. right? Like, not trying to be fucking Taylor Swift or Jonas Brothers. I don't even know what they sound like, but those are names that I've heard. So it's kind of funny. There's, I think, a, a natural light worker appeal to kind of like have an instant hit of like, yeah, no, like mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be something that's being pushed on me. Yeah. And that's where I think people have to pay attention to is like sometimes communities can create a push without realizing have that has that energy been taken over, like to push an agenda. We've been seeing too many agendas over the last four years. It's insane mm -hmm. to where I feel like, you know, when you show up with your unique self, that's where I feel like there's been the other side where it's not been an agenda, but much more of a divine connection of all these people starting to see through and connect. Mm -hmm. And all you had to do was just be yourself and, yeah. and, and be that unique person to find other people who are that too. And that's what makes the most amazing shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, behind me is Da Vinci, right? It's like that guy didn't follow the program, but today his paintings, I mean, that's behind me. But like, if you think about the work that he did, it it's it's still revolutionary today because it was so unique. And I just feel like if we look at the Renaissance period or any time in history where spirituality became more physically embedded, because it is a card that has a sculpture on it. It's like Leonardo da Vinci wasn't making a painting of Jesus. That's all 12 zodiac signs. It's the disciples and understanding how it actually works. Like they were using the artwork they were using the manifestations not only as something beautiful but as something to wake people up with and i feel like that's the other part is like are you making something to be cool or are you making something that is to wake people up and it can be cool i feel mm -hmm. like that has to be like the it has to be last yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and now, you know leah's starting to learn that now too because she's been getting into energy healing so case reconnected her with the reconnective healing frequencies she was also first and second degree Reiki certified. And she's been going through this thing like, okay, so when you do Reiki, you have to use these symbols and you have to say this prayer and you have to say these affirmations and you have to do it this way. You got to do it. She's like, but I got my own way of doing it. I said, do whatever works, whatever works and opens that door that helps people connect to that frequency. Do it however you want. And that's the, the and if... The highest form of light work is getting people to understand and trust themselves. That's, yeah. that's the, the, the goal that I have every time I get on camera is to help people understand how to trust themselves. And I put a video out the other day where one thing that you hear a lot in the spiritual community, you hear people say all the time, you have all the answers. The answers are inside of you. And when I was new on my path, that was like one of the most annoying fucking things. I'd be like, what are you talking about? I don't have answers to anything. What are you talking about? And it took me about two or three years to realize that, oh, I get it. Whatever I choose to believe the answer is, is what the answer is. Mm -hmm. We're so conditioned to believe that there's this 
this this truth that exists outside of us that we don't know that somebody else knows. Yeah. Well, if that's what you believe, if you don't believe that you know the answer, then you're creating an experience in which you don't know the answer. Getting people to trust how powerful their beliefs are is 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 the key to unlocking that, you know? Yeah. Because if people could trust themselves instead of the outside program we're gonna we're gonna create the most amazing stuff like it, th this card also reminds me of like what really went down just in the last couple hundred years to even ancient times of like our structures and our ancient buildings and all of our temples and pyramids and like these amazing things that were built were they coming from because they saw it in a fucking magazine <laughs> like no obviously not and the people who came together to build these things, were they all spiritual? Yes, that's a check mark. Two, were they going off what the program of the society was? No. They, they wanted to do something that felt called and trusting that thing that they unlocked within their soul that their divine code fucking really expressed. Mm -hmm. And go for that calling. Because I feel like as the awakening experience expands, it come, becomes more focused. As, as the wider it gets, the more narrow it gets in knowing who you are and knowing how powerful that skill set is. And that's what then every expansion goes in every area. But especially with collaboration, I think that's one of the, where we really get to the higher tiers of real awakening mm -hmm. is by coming together and building things together. That's the only way that things are going to be shown. And I think that's, what's kind of interesting about this digital age is like, it's great digitally because of course it gets quicker and so forth. But you know, I don't know who's going to have all these files or if all these servers will be up. Like, let's say fucking the power goes out forever. Like where's all that info going to go? So I feel like we we're all in an interesting moment at the same time too, of like, as a spiritual community, like what are we really building now too outside of the digital world that really can be a place? And I feel like that's what these, this future is going to provide us with is like allowing ourselves to realize that we can build. And I don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be something because I'm not trying to create the program of what it looks like. Right. Yeah. But everybody has a unique thing. And that's what I find through people who are spiritual jewelers or, you know, people make me some of the coolest shit I've ever seen, or people are coming up with healing tools that are fucking beyond. And, and uh, that's the shit I, I love. Whenever I meet people who have something that's so different, I love it. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, I, and that's what I think what's weird about pop culture today is like, you know, you'll see an influencer and then they'll make, a product and it's just the simple shit that's like the other person building and you know mm -hmm. it's like eh, that's that's so you know people are kind of weird about it you know it's like if if target's trying to make your it, it, are you really is it really your name making the brand or is target using your name to make their own shit <laughs> so there is three of pentacles used in many ways i think if it's used spiritually it's better yeah. Or the best or the real way it should be. Yeah. And, and another thing that, that I get to talking a lot about too, a lot of, a lot of people, they'll come to me and, and they'll say that their goal is to not only attract their life partner, but they want to be a power couple, you know, a, a couple who comes together and builds an empire together as a team. And that is a completely different dynamic of relationship. Yeah. That require you got to be in tune. You got to think because if, if the two of you are going to be in a power couple relationship, you got to be lovers, best friends. There has to be a president, a CEO, a vice president, the boss, yep. the manager, the employee, a parent, you know, all these roles that take place in the household, all these different dynamics where your average person, you know, they have their boss somewhere out here at work, and then they have uh, maybe a manager above them, and then they have a president and a CEO above them, then they have their friends over here, 
And, and they have all these, it's all out here in the outside world. But to have that in the same household between you and your partner, all those different dynamics of roles that have to be played is a completely different yeah. dynamic of relationship that honestly, though, uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. That was, that was like my biggest goal that, you know, that I wanted. And then I gave up on it. I didn't think it was possible, but I wouldn't have it any other way. No, I completely agree with you. Cause I feel like I remember I was born in the eighties. Like I used to be in the garage with my dad, helping him replace a motor, even though I was so young, it wasn't like I was doing much, but he'd be like, he taught me like, go get this tool. Like, you know, go get this and creating projects and doing things like that. That's something that was like, you know, even the nineties was a big deal. And, and then now people will like kind of freak out. Like, what are you doing? Like you're changing your own oil. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of not that hard to do, you know, like I feel like we're kind of in an interesting world right now where, you know, younger generations, they're, they're pro no, there's nothing wrong with it. Maybe it's just the evolution. It's sad. Though. Right. But it, it is sad because it's like our, 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 you know, are they, are they making anything or creating anything or building anything? Like, I feel like it's more like, let's, let's get hop on the video game and be on discourse and yeah. you know, like what's your discourse and like, let's just play games. Yeah. And, and you know, I think that's also people forget in Rome, like the reason why they built the Coliseum was to distract the people. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, I feel like a lot of the games today that are being used and so forth, are subliminally being used to make people feel like they're actually coming together, but they're not really coming together. They're coming together in a virtual world to like, you know, Oh, let's team up on modern warfare. And, uh, you know, and let's, let, let's go kill a bunch of people yeah. that are not people, but others on another side. And then, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm in a group, but then it's like, they've never met. And then, you know, it's kind of interesting because there's been studies that people that, like constantly do that and then meet people, other, other people, they don't know how to meet people in reality. So like they'll end up as a lover with something or only their friend because of that in that video game world. Yeah. And that's kind of scary because they don't trust anybody outside of that. Like, well, you don't understand. Now I can understand that in the spiritual community, but in the spiritual community, you know, like you can't go, let's say build an event or something. We're still dealing with, you know, people that maybe aren't spiritual in life. Yeah. So I think it's a very, I, I love that you brought all the roles up because I think that people are maybe taking it too simple. Like I just only want to do this in my life. I don't want that many extra things where I'm like, mm -hmm. the three of pentacles to me is like, that's why I love it. It's like a card that's like, Hey, maybe I'm taking the role of this in this project. Cause I like to do this. And I'm in a role of like this and that project and in that project. And that's what really builds things. I mean, you're not going to get a Nobel Peace Prize for how well or how many people you shot in fucking Call of Duty. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not going to happen. Yeah. And even at that, though, even outside of like the video games, this is one thing that always tripped me up that didn't start making sense to me until here lately. Like the, the other day, me and Leah were outside putting up Christmas lights on the house. And right next to the sidewalk, a group of people are walking up this way and a group of people are walking up this way and they're hollering at each other. Hey, hey, what's up? I don't know if they were friends or what, but they, they came together right next to us on the sidewalk next to our house. And you can hear them talking. Oh, yeah, the Rams are doing good. Oh, yeah, the Eagles and blah, 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 blah. That's all they were talking about was sports. And that brought me back to, like, my whole life growing up. I grew up in the southern Indiana, Louisville, Kentucky area. And if, if you live in that area and you don't, Either you have to have a team, either University of Kentucky or University of Louisville. You're one or the other. If you're like me and they say, oh, who, who are you going for? I don't care. Dude, yeah. they look at you like there is something seriously wrong with you. I don't care who got the ball on the other side of the court more times than the other person. Like that has never grabbed my interest. I right. try. I'm, I see my my birthday. It's very very common for my birthday to fall on Super Bowl Sunday, and I'll go to the <laughs> Super Bowl parties just for the free beer and right. sit there and try to pretend that I'm interested in these these dudes fighting over a ball. And I just don't give a single French fried fuck 
who gets the ball on the I don't care. And one time I almost got kicked out of a Super Bowl party over that. They're like, so who are you going for? I'm like, I don't care. What? I, I, I don't care. I have no idea what's going on on the screen. And, and it's just always bothered me. I've had this default setting in my brain where, where like, I give no fucks about those things that they use to distract the other humans. Yeah. And everybody gets sucked into it and obsessed with it. Dude, people have gotten stabbed over, over wearing the wrong team jersey into a club. Over a fucking team. People have gotten stabbed in, in Louisville, where I'm from. And I've just never been able to wrap my mind around that. And in my whole life, I thought something was wrong with me. <laughs> right. Like, what is wrong with me? That, that, I'm, that I, I will sit and I'll try to watch this football game and my brain will just tune it out. And, and I just can't even be interested in it as hard as I'm trying. And it didn't start making sense to me up until the, the last couple of years since 2020. That, oh, I came in with default settings. I came in with some default settings. My brain was automatically set up to not allow certain information <laughs> because I'm on mission, you know? So yeah, that's one thing that, that I've had trouble with my whole life. That's crazy. Yeah. I feel like for me, when I got in my awakening, it was when I started pulling away from sports as far as watching instead, I would rather compete in them, even though I did my whole life, but like, that's why I started my racing team like it was like if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna go out there and actually do it but again it's something that most people are like what what do you do like you're yeah. a jet ski racer <laughs> um yeah but like uh, as far as watching it and then i again i i understand because i feel like the only sport i do watch is baseball but i always say it and then i'm too busy and it's not like i'm losing my emotion over it. but that's what's kind of interesting is this card everybody feels like they're there because there's something of deep importance. And that's where I think the question really comes in is like, what's really deep importance? Yeah. Like what is there to build that actually is important. It's also a card that does bring up that energy of what looks sacred, spiritually sacred. And it, there's a something else too. One of, one of the guys is elevated up on top, but it's almost like, you know, and he's wearing an apron as well. So there's always been questions on this card, like if they're actually like in a um, a mason mm. lodge. Mm. I mean, it probably was. Yeah. There's also three arches. There's the main arch, and then there's the two arches that are there. And there's, so there's three with the three pentacles on top that are all done in stone. But what's interesting is there isn't one guy elevated up who is wearing the apron and it's like he's there's like this object that he has that looks like a cup so he's deflecting it but he's looking at something to whether it's reflect or listen to and then almost as if like he's showing it it's a very this is like one of the most mysterious cards i always feel yeah. and the polka dots on what looks like the woman in there too, who's holding it. And then the other guy looks like he's like a monk. But what I think it represents is they're all three from the most different fucking places and coming together Yeah, on a simple basis. You know, well, I've always looked at it and like, I've been wondering what exactly they're doing in that card. I look at it and I can only assume they're working on the archway there. Yeah. I mean, uh, because the only, the only, well, I mean, I may be wrong on this, but the I, left side of the archway, which is kind of interesting, which has a, a I, I yeah. assume that the only card that actually depicts doing actual work is the eight of pentacles. That dude's working. He's carving out the pentacles. So I get kind of tripped up on this sometimes. Yeah. And, and that's when I'll usually just 95% of the time, it has something to do with teamwork or a relationship at the workplace, especially in a love reading, you know? This will come out a lot to say, hey, you know, who's the next person coming in? And, and I'll say, oh, are you interested in somebody at the workplace? Yes. Well, you don't need to be in a workplace relationship, you know, so it is very mysterious. Well, what's interesting, too, is on the middle of it. If you see in the middle, it's got a rose cross. See that? In the archway. Yeah, yeah. And like that, I put it in the middle because I have the Rosicrucian rose cross right there. And that's what makes me think of the bricks at the top too, is like 
this has to do with Rosicrucianism and has to do with fraternities. Old spiritual fraternities. Mm-hmm. Rosicrucianism that turned into other different parts, but of Freemasonry and so forth, which is actually really interesting because it, it, if you actually, I know a lot of people go into the conspiracies about them, but if you see the basis of them and the originality of them, it was light workers coming together and having to stay secret because they would have been killed for doing it mm-hmm. coming together. Right now, how organizations are formed three, 400 years later, of course, can be compromised, just like the American government. But that's what's really interesting to me is like it is a signal, in my opinion, to fraternal spiritual orders. Yeah, well, I mean, kind of going back to what you were talking about uh, a few minutes ago about, you know, what, what's been going on over the past couple hundred years. I, th- I think it's interesting because of, according to all the research that I've done, back in the day, spirituality was just commonplace. It was so commonplace that there wasn't even a word for it. It's just who we were, you know? Right. And they had to work to create the program. And they had to dumb us down and dumb us down and dumb us down and, and over generations. And now we're reversing that. So now right. we have this awakening and spirituality. It's like we're all spiritual beings. That's just who we are. But now just like they had to work to create the program – now we have to come in and work to reverse that program. That makes sense? Yes. So so we're going to be getting to a place where eventually at some point later on down the line it's not going to be really awakening because once you awaken you awaken to a certain level and then the rest of it is evolution. You just evolve. Now now that you're awake, now the rest of it is evolving and and we're coming together and and evolving as some of the most badass fucking beings in the whole universe. I I agree. I feel like too, the evolving though, like it starts from a foundational standpoint. So Washington, for example, when he put the Capitol building, he laid the, he was a Mason. It's one of the most famous paintings of Washington besides the one of him in the white house that was taken out in 1812 during the fire. But is him laying the grounds of the Capitol and the foundation slab. That's why you see the bricks in there. And it's surrounded by a bunch of spiritual people with a intention spiritually of building the people's house. That's based off a spiritual understanding to creator. So to me, when I look at this, it looks like it's like them laying down the foundations. And I think that that's where some, because it's a three and it's pretty low. It kind of reminds me of like, yeah, you always want to have that place with your tribe, your spiritual tribe where you set a foundation down. And I think in this journey of awakening, you're going to come together for hot moments. Like it's going to be hot on fire. And then there's going to be moments where it's not, but it's always about whether or not you still come back to the same foundational place to keep up. Oh, let's do this now, or let's do this. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Indiana Jones, in my opinion, it's like, well, the guy keeps fucking going out there and seeking all the fucking shit and, Throughout the movies, they show, oh, there, there's Salah. He's sitting back in this one. and then, But everybody's got that same, like, trust within themselves. Mm-hmm. And I think that's another part of this card that might get misunderstood is, like, there's a trust between all three of them. There's no discourse. There's no chaos. There's no nothing. The light is within them. The r- surroundings are dark. Like, the colors are the people. <clears throat> yeah. And, and I look at this reality as like this gray reality and we're the light workers that are full of the color bringing the reality to life, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, well, I mean, it, 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 remember what we were talking about off camera a minute ago about how sometimes in the spiritual community, some weirdness and some drama will seek in. And to me, that, that kind of helps you weed out who the real light workers are because it does, it goes back to that trust. There should be no trust issues. Right. There should not be. There's... There's very common sense, common human decency guidelines that you don't you don't have to to worry about trusting somebody. It's just you're a fellow human. I'm not going to steal from you ever. I'm never going right. to try to fuck your girl. I'm never going to do certain Nothing. things that it's just unspoken code. And for any of that weirdness to be brought in, it's like that that lights that person's intentions up and it's like oh okay so are you really 
a or, light or darkens it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So are you really a light worker? Are your intentions really in right. the right spot? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of somebody who's really hyped. Too hyped. It's kind of like, are we really making something? Or are you just trying to come in here and, you know, because that, that's what you see when I think of people who are, it's like, oh, they don't follow the code. You know, they're really too excited. That's the people that start, whether it's gossip or whether it's all these things, it's like, are we working or are you just in here to fucking gossip and just create chaos and havoc? Yeah. And I think that that there's a seriousness about this card of like the work, not serious. Like you're a serious person. I can't work with you. Like you're too serious, (laughs) but there's a seriousness about the, the spiritual essence of what's being created. And I love how you said the word code, because that's really where, there's a spiritual and ethical code that's just sort of an automatic trust that you can see within people who have it and don't. And that's when that work can come together to be created. And I think that's actually, I think one of the best foundational parts of this card is like, it, it's a card of relief. Like, oh, okay, great. Like we can come together and make this shit happen. Where that's, I think the problem in the world is when you're trying to juggle things within yourself, like the two of pentacles that's before this, you know, it's really juggling the idea of where am I going or who am I working with in life always. You know, we think our problems or struggles are all these things that we're juggling that are hard, but it's like, it's always, where's the solution at? And the solution's always with another party and people coming together and working things out. You know, like if it's money or something, it's like, okay, maybe it's you and your partner, And it's a money situation. Well, that third energy, it's like, where's the relief? Well, it's somebody who understands the same code or is a good person who could help you with that. Or we could, or it's, you know what I mean? Like there's always a, something that comes in in another party or another situation that's going to be on the same level. And anything where I'm like, that's not good for us or good for me and you or me and this person or it's like, don't take that in. Yeah. You know? because there's something about that four of pentacles after this card that, that wants to hold on to that fucking pentacle Mm -hmm. so deep. So there's a lot of attachment with pentacles, but I feel like a lot of it is the physical attachment, but in here it feels like it's the one pentacle that has a much more deeper spiritual attachment than physical per se. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, Cause it's so easy to get, to get caught up in that, you know, yeah. especially in the spiritual community, especially if you're going to be a spiritual entrepreneur, like being able to balance making a living and making money and especially making a good living. I know. Cause you know, if, if you are in tune and you're really on mission, well, and matter of fact, <laughs> you don't even really have to be, honestly. You have the capability of stepping into the spiritual community and making a way better living than fucking most doctors. Right. You know, and it's it's really easy, you know, and we, we all know a couple of people who are in a position in the spiritual community who are, you know, not spiritual at all. They're in it no. for nothing but the material thing. I know. And, fame and money and all this and there's nothing wrong with those things nothing at all but like we were saying earlier that comes last yeah the mission comes first like i like i i told you a couple of weeks ago i i don't care about money you know when i don't chase money right. the universe makes sure that i'm paid for my work when the time is right if i do something right now and i don't get paid for it fuck it i don't care right. i'll get paid later the universe sees what i'm doing and i know where my heart is i'm on mission there, there, right. there's a fucking problem in the world that needs to be fixed. That's my job. I, you know, and, and being able to, to hold that balance and do the actual work and, and let the, the material things come later as a little bonus to that. That's one thing that lots of people struggle with. Yeah. Because I think you hit the nail on the head, the work like in this card to me would be, there's nothing worse when you can tell somebody's just there because of the money, because then they're not thinking about the actual work that could be done. They're just thinking of the end goal that they need something and it's coming from a place of lack. Mm -hmm. Whereas this card brings up like, doesn't show anything about money either. You know, it shows everything about like, Hey, we're showing up to make this and understanding the bigger picture here of what's being created. 
And that's, I think, the biggest thing. You know, it's like, I think people are kind of hardwired in this program, this program in the matrix to be, especially once you get in this spiritual life fully and you make it your living, you unwire yourself with that. It's like, I don't even like, if I get a project sent to me, I'm not even asking for what the money is or what it is. Like, I just know it's going to pay itself back some other way mm -hmm. or whatever. Whereas people are more wired, like how much is the money? And blah, 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 blah. And then I think that's where you see a lot of people have problems in their life, whether it's health or friendships or relationships, because it's all based upon what's the exchange, not spiritually, not about what's being created, but just off transactional relationships. Mm, yeah. And I would say the three of pentacles reverse can be so many things, but I would say definitely transactional. Yeah. Not spiritual. And that's where I feel like, you know, whenever I think of cards of that are weird about three and like another person weird, we talked about it with three of swords. We talked about it with three of cups, three of pentacles to me can be very more personally. When I do readings for people, what that, uh, and I see that that's the card that always has me go, who's this fucking other person? Cause it always to me is like some, some plant, some business person trying to fuck up another person or somebody who had, has an intention to disrupt something beautiful mm -hmm. that's being built. Yeah. So, so to me, that's the, this is the one when it's reversed. I'm always like, I don't know about that third person. Or if it's like for a reading for somebody and it's like, Oh yeah, I met somebody new. It's kind of like, yeah, they ain't into it for, for much except for whatever they want. They don't mm -hmm. want to build the things that you want and they'll probably try and take you away from your friends or the people that, you know, that's where I feel like it's kind of like the control freak. Like, no, I don't want like, you know, there's those crazy relationships out there that whether it's a guy or a girl who are like, no, you can't go hang out with anybody or your friends yeah. or you can't go do this or you can't be around do your work stuff or you can't like that to me is the scariest kind of person. Mm hmm. To me, like if somebody was, if I were to deal with somebody who was like floozy or something and like slutty and just like, I'd be like, whatever, I'm not going to get, my heart's not going to get destroyed. My heart would get more destroyed if somebody was out to try and stop the spiritual work yeah, or to try and crush that work or to try and fuck with that work. If that makes sense. That that's the crazy kind of, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the weird fucking shit. <laughs> but I mean, if you can maintain, cause I have to tell people about this all the time. I do readings about this where somebody will have somebody who's trying to sabotage them. And this is where I always go back to your superpower is your focus. Because when it all comes down to it, another person can't sabotage you. Yeah, Try as they may, especially if you're doing your mission. If you, a, a relationship, for example, if you are with that one person the universe picked out for you, nobody can sabotage that. Try as they may. But let's say, let's say you get into a position where lots of people are trying to fuck with you and sabotage you. You focus on your goal. Let them talk. Let, let the rumors fly around. Let, let people think whatever. Let people say whatever. You focus on your goal. Just let the noise do whatever the noise has right. got to do. The universe will carry you straight through all that shit and yeah. they will sabotage themselves. See, the only way that it works is if you start exchanging energy with it. I start hearing, like, I tell people this all the time. I love when rumors start floating around about me. Right. I don't defend myself. I step back and I see who believes it. Because think about it. Picture somebody in your mind that you love, somebody that you really look up to, or somebody that you like. If you hear a rumor floating around about them, you don't want to believe it. I mean, even if you have no evidence, if it's somebody you like, somebody that that's your people, you'll probably immediately jump to their defense without any evidence. Now flip that coin over. Now think of somebody you don't like. You hear a rumor floating around about them, you want to believe it. Right. You'll jump on that, right? Yeah. So when I hear a rumor floating around about me, I step back and I see who believes it. And it's like, especially if it's like a bold face fucking lie. Right. That doesn't even sound like something that I would do or say. I'd right. be like, Oh, you believe that? Oh, okay. You know what that tells me? You want to believe that. Right. You're an undercover hater. Okay. 
That's that's the universe exposing the snakes in your in your close circle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I I'm glad you brought this up because with that three of pentacles, your tribe and the people that are really in your corner, you're just as much in their corner. And because you already know their code, you know their ethics. And I feel like that's where we self-sabotage ourselves, right? We self-undo. But I feel like when, I'm so glad that you brought up, like, how are people reacting? Do they want it to? It's usually they want something for themselves. Maybe they want your girl. Maybe they want the project and they want to disrupt things to get it to wherever they own it themselves or something. But it always has something to do with an in, an individual intention without thinking of a collective intention, especially on rumor mills and shit like that. I was thinking of the opposite though. when I just was thinking about it. Cause like this weekend you posted you with like the elf shit on and I fucking ah. reposted it. Cause I thought it was fucking great. Cause it's, I forgot the exact thing you said. You said like people out here are what? Like, um, I said you ain't about that. You life. ain't about that life, right? <laughs> and I went like, like no fucking like I nobody is as much as fucking rich. So I posted it and I I had fun making it. It was like so much fun making it on my stories because like I fucking was all about it. I'm like, so I was thinking of like that's where you're with your tribe is like fucking. I was laughing so hard, <laughs> so hard. Sophia yeah. was too. We were laughing, and then she she was on the floor laughing when I sent the fucking stories with me tagging you in it. When I added the fucking yeah. Christmas Carol shit to it, <laughs> and I said nobody about that fucking like ranch. And then on the other one, I found one that fuck was like a Santa Claus. I typed in homo and it yeah. had homosexual. <laughs> and I knew that you would know. I was just fucking yeah, yeah. with you, but it was like, but that's how I know, right? That's how you know is like, yeah. you celebrate your friends and you have fun and you can like be with them on wherever. It's the opposite. When I almost feel like rumors don't float around people that really are doing the work. Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like the three of pentacles is like, are you going to really go to work with that person? Like, I mean, eh, you, you already know. And I feel like this might be a little triggering, but I like to do work with people who've already been doing the work. Yeah. You know, because you're not going to be worrying about their spiritual fucking issues that they're, we're all evolving. But anybody who's just like, I just awoke yesterday. It's just kind of like, oh, shit. Like, how are they going to deal with problems? And they're still going to do, you know, typical, yeah. like, oh, I'm going to jump back into the matrix because I'm now scared. Yeah. And that's, to me, the rumor mill or the weird people, the weird situations, the people that have one foot in or even a, just a fucking little pinky toe in. Mm -hmm. and, but talk a big game like they're fully fucking jumped yeah. in. They ain't, they ain't, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no. it, I mean, it... it I can kind of understand. Well, maybe not. Because, I mean, like, like we've said before, um, people a lot of times are under the impression that awake means I found out that everything that I was taught was a lie. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. That's, that's the very first little, little that's the eggshell cracking. You're just you're just cracked a little eggshell. Your little eyes popping out of it. Now you can kind of kind of see that there's another world out there, you know. But but there's so much more to it, and and those are the people who you know they found out. Oh well, oh oh here's one that <laughs> here's one that drives me nuts. People who are awakening, but then they they act like one news station is telling you the truth and the other one is a lie. Mm -hmm. Like when people say, oh, you must watch CNN. As if Fox News is telling you the truth, right? Or, or the other way around, or you much watch Fox News? Like they think one news station is telling you the truth and the other right. one's a lie. It's like you're <laughs> those are the people that that yeah they like to brag like they're awake. Oh, I found out that there's a deep state, so I listen to Fox News. It's like you an idiot. <laughs> Just stay on that path for a little bit longer and hit me up later. You know? Yeah, I mean it, it's kind of like like oh my gosh, you jump in the Pacific Notion ocean not the atlantic ocean yeah. like what i thought it's all one ocean <laughs> yeah. sorry they have different names but the oceans yes they're different but there's the same ocean like so if we take something uh, that well then that's the thing i mean if you take the news i don't think these three people in the three pentacles are even paying attention to the news they're in the cover of their spiritual like we'll call it whether it's temple or whether it's spiritual place you know there, there, there is something about, I would say at the same time too, the way that I've actually never looked at this card this way, but I'm going to look at it this way now is 
I feel like they're also digging deeper into things like they're, they're coming together to also uncover more truth. Like there is something about like also about light work, like showing something to help other people understand something that they're researching or that they're going deeper into. Um, and, and that's not because they're on the news getting the idea for it. One thing that the news I think is the most weirdest place is like, they're not questioning things. I mean, even the news of the old days, you'd have to find like some very unique, you know, specials that were more like investigative news, you know, but nobody's really wanting to investigate. That's a very private place now. And it's like, most people just go off Wikipedia. That's their research now. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, like, I don't know. I, I just feel like that when you come together with people who have a quest for fucking going a little bit deeper than what's here at the moment. Mm -hmm. Because to me, this feels like it's underground because the fucking, it's kind of crazy because above them are bricks. Yeah. Right. So it feels like it's underground all the conspiracy people are going to be like, are they in the tunnels? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. But, you know, I mean, who knows? But there is that understanding of a deeper underground. And also, I just noticed this, too. In between all three of the three of the three pentacles, you see the cross in the middle of it that bridges them all together. Hmm. Which, that's the, that's the actual glyph of Earth. Um so that's quite interesting to me. It also uh, is the glyph of part of fortune at the same time too. So I, I, well, it does look like that whatever yeah. it is that they're working on has already been built. That's what trips me up about it. There's this dude over here off to the side. Is that, is that a chisel he has on the wall? What's that thing he's holding here? Is that a hammer? Is he chiseling something? I can never figure that out. So it, 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 I mean, it could be from crushing, crushing up an alchemy, like, you know, whether you're taking different herbs or different alchemical aspects and actually uh, doing that. But it's weird because he's using it almost like a horn or a reflection of light. And it's so hard to gauge what she's showing. Although, if anything, it looks like one of the sphinxes to me that are in like the chariot, but like turned to the side on the paper. Yeah. Like it's kind of an, an interesting thing. It's almost like it's so, I mean, maybe I'm getting fucking old where my, my eyes I'm trying to read, <laughs> but the head looks like, or, or it could look like a dog. I mean, in many ways, like the mm -hmm. way the head does look, but it looks like a, a a thing more than the piece of paper because it or you know what is this right here because like on mine you can kind of see where it looks like the three pinnacles are like right there it, does yours show that it almost looks like you can see the three pinnacles right there oh yeah that one has more drawing on it let me see that closer up Oh, whoa. Yeah, this drawing's a little bit different. It actually looks like a fucking... I mean, this might sound crazy, but it looks like one of the fucking, like, weird stone men at, um... That's kind of trippy, actually. Because you can see the nose and the eye. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of my favorite yeah, decks. Yeah, fucking it gnarly. Looks like, it looks like they took this whole deck and, and like made it. It almost looks like colored pencil drawings. Yeah, that's trippy. Yeah. Either way, though. Yeah, I still... But I, I, I get what you mean. There's something weird going on there. But that's what I like about it. There's a little mystery to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it almost, it almost kind of looks like they're gathered somewhere where something's already built. And they may be doing something. Like maybe they're, they're getting together, like you said, in secret getting together in secret and, and discussing something 
as far as spirituality or something secret so they don't get killed for it or whatever, you know? I don't know. But well, I mean, I mean, I mean, we're still being listened to today. I mean, nothing's changed, you know, like they're, they're after us now. Yeah. Maybe they had cell phones because they're so far underground. They wanted to make sure that nothing fucking, no, no, no fucking nothing could come through. But there's definitely the, the weird part are, is, is the both to the right are, are kind of, let's call it overdressed. Very, very well dressed. The other, the other guy who's holding everything, he's he's a little lighter dressed, but he is wearing the fucking apron, and he does look like the guy who is in the chariot or the temperance card, or you know, like he's kind of used a lot. Hmm. It, there's a lot of secrets in this card, though. But I, I think that's what, what makes it uh, very special is maybe this is them understanding to, I'm going to just take it new age, understanding that we're in 3D and how to get out. Hmm. That'd, be a, that'd be a good way to look at it. I thought there was a reason why I picked three threes in a row. You know, <laughs> yeah, right, last right. Three weeks yeah. in three threes. Yeah, I could see that. But, I mean, it does still, like I said, it goes back to to where we're heading into. And I, and I make it a point. I know I've said this on many different episodes, probably at least five different episodes, and I'm, I'm keeping saying it. I want to keep saying it because I'm going to re- reference back to it later on next year when you see a lot of the people who are just trying right. to, you know, me, my ego, me, 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 they're going to fall off. I know. If they don't want to come together because we're we're – like, like I say, right now, what we have, we have this big arm wrestling match between the toxic masculine and the toxic feminine. It's all this war of there's the red pill people trying to take control and get us back under the control of the toxic masculine. Then we have the feminists who are trying to take control and put us under the control of the toxic feminine. And it's like neither one of them are going to work. We're moving into a world where we are awakening elevating and balancing divine masculine and divine feminine that means that we have to come together and work together in a way that we never have before right and anybody that that's in this for me 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 myself and i they're gonna fall off and and i'm gonna reference back to this next year when you start yeah. seeing a lot of people fall off and be like see well and i think people are falling off because they don't have any grounded intention work they don't have any foundational work and to build a foundation with others it has to be solid as fucking rock, right? It's got to have that solid. And, th- and that solid stance is not just between the people, but it's the, the solid stance of the foundation that the people individually have within themselves and their work. That's really what light work is, is a bunch of light workers standing together who individually, you could not fucking throw them off a cliff to change their point of view about their light work, period. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no way that you're going to try and convince me to go fucking quit the work and fucking go back to the Matrix and do Matrix shit. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, like, so that's what's interesting about the Matrix, right? Is they're all in the Nebuchadnezzar and then there's the fucking one dude who fucking's like, no, nah, I want to get out. Let me go eat steak again. Like, fucking da 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 And he betrays all of them. And it's like, you know... <clears throat> You could tell people who do the work who really don't want to do the work because they're more fascinated with, let me just be on the beach and work from a fucking laptop and never have to work. Yeah. Like the, like the spiritual people who sell that, I've always been the harshest on them because it's like, do you really want to do the work? And that's the other weird thing about, because I do so much research and historical research and so forth, the spirituality, it's like, whether even if you use religions, for example... The idea of just going around, just floating around, just being on a laptop and being on a beach and fucking just being in Tulum and, you know, showing off your ass one weekend and going to another place to do spiritual work and just kind of floating around, you don't get any work done. Like there, there's got to be a foundational place, uh, a place to come back to. I mean, look at why would they build the pyramids? Like to go have, I don't know, some powerful Egyptian magi to be able to go to some other place in the world and go do it. No, it's like to go do the work at the fuck pyramids. Mm-hmm. 
so there's there's something about coming back to this like sometimes place but usually it's the deeper place that you do the work and also it could be within yourself like you know we have our own places we do our work then we have other places that we do work with other people so it is it is unfortunately the temple or the the, the place that spiritual work is kind of done to or it could be the meeting place and where this stuff happens can be looked at either or, but I, I do feel that there is, um, these people are not finicky. They're not flighty. And I, and I think that's the problem in this community today is there's a lot of flighty people like, Oh yeah, I'll do the work. I got some money. I'm off later. Oh yeah. Peace. I'm off. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's work. Mm -hmm. It's work. Just like, man, this week, speaking of light work and power couples, me and my wife are busy this week. She just texted me. See, we, we did our Cyber Monday deal back at like 11 a.m. She just texted me like 30 minutes ago, said, I finally finished the emails. She's been in her office doing emails all day. I'm going to be in my studio from sunup to sundown for the rest of this week. I'm not going to have no time to go do nothing. Right. It's work. And, you know, I'm not just going to turn the camera on, flip some cards, and make up some bullshit. I have to bring 100% of my energy to the table. Right. Because every single time I pull out that paper and I turn my camera on, that's an individual out there who has a life, who's making fucking decisions based on the words that come out of my mouth. Right. I don't take that as a game at all. No. Like, that's very fucking serious. And it's work. If <laughs> if you want to if you want to get into this work, you better be prepared to actually get into some work. It's about more than just being cool and having power and influence over people. And look at me, I'm an influencer. You know, it's more than that. Like if you're an influencer, that and so many people take that word and use it so lightly. I, I want to be an influencer. Okay, you want to influence people. What what do you want to influence people to do? Uh, I just want a bunch of people to watch my content. That's not an influencer. You're no. an idiot. A real influencer is somebody who is helping guide people. What are you influencing people? Are you influencing people to walk towards their death or to awaken the highest vibrational version of themselves that they can and take their power back? Most people don't give a fuck. They just want to look, no. cool, you know? Well, and I feel like it's like influencer to me is kind of light because I think of inspirational is a better term for existence. Like, let me be an inspiration to others. Whether it's like Martin Luther King, for example, right? Like if there's a fucking cause happening and piece of shit people out there fucking segregating people and doing shit, he fucking didn't think of it as like, I need to be on the beach. They didn't have laptops back then, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm just going to go be on the beach and complain about it. And that's the problem is people go, I'm going to go on my phone and complain about it on the beach. And I just did my work. <laughs> like, no, that motherfucker had to fucking go do all the fucking work. And he had to end up to where he got to a place to where it's like, fuck that guy's at the Lincoln monument fucking speaking in front of fucking a true fucking 250,000 plus people. That's fucking some of the biggest fucking people that's ever met in life <clears throat> in Washington. So I, I, I look at it to where it's like, people have to really, be willing to do the work, but the idea of work to people now is to not work. That's the irony is yeah. like, how much work can I do without working? <laughs> Which yeah. you see in jobs today, right? That's the number one complaint. It was just an article three weeks ago about CEOs, like where it's like, no, we're not going to pay money for, to train you on how to use like new technology. That's something you should be doing on your own time because we're all using it all the time. So if you're, if you're at a place where it's like using the excuse and I'm, uh, some people might get upset with me, but I said this fucking six, seven years ago. And I said, this would be the main issue of 23 into 24 is like, if you're not up to date with how to use technology, fucking, and you're playing the whole, I'm older. I don't know what I'm doing. No, you just didn't want to do the work. You know, because I, my, my, my grandmother who passed four years ago at 94, she was on Facebook and Instagram and everything and knew mm -hmm. how to do all of that shit. Yep, yep. So anybody out there, I don't know what to do, how to do it. 
too stuck in your ways. Right? It's like, I'm sorry, but like that was Home Depot's old fucking way of doing it, right? It was like, build it yourself. Like, go do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, this place, I fucking just figure it out. Or the tech, it's not like I went to school for to, to know how to do fucking videography or cinema cameras or fucking do all this shit. No, I figured it out. Right? And that's the other thing about this car is like the people in there, if the situation comes, they might be talented, but they also are talented because they know whatever the task might be that might take them outside where they don't know, they will figure it out. Mm -hmm. That's the problem is most people are like, I only am good up to this point. It's 6 p.m. I got to go. Go where? It was my time done with work. It's like, oh, I didn't know that there was a time when the work was over. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, and that's the number one failure of life right there is like i'm gonna put an end and i only work from this to that and that blah, 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 blah. oh my god to go do what i don't know i'm gonna go fucking play video games or fucking yeah. go i just want to go whatever you know that's the that's the way you know the, matrix, I mean? the matrix has programmed everybody to run on that system wake up in the morning and force yourself to go do some bullshit you don't want to do in exchange for just a little bitty bullshit amount of money that you can barely use to survive. So, so the way we have people thinking is they're constantly looking forward to a day when they can do nothing because they have to make themselves do some shit they don't want to yep. do. So this is why so many, so many clients will come to me and, and I'll have to ask them what... And, and no, seriously, everybody out there, think about this. What would you do if we woke up tomorrow and money was non-existent? What would you do? What would you do with your time? All your basic needs are met. You got food, you got shelter, you got a vehicle, you got gas. You, all your basic needs are met. What would you do with your time? Most people don't even fucking know. They don't, no. and it breaks my heart too because... People come to me and ask me questions like, should I write this book I've been wanting to write for the last five oh, years? Oh, I know. I'm like, what do you mean, should you? What they're asking me is, if I write this book I've been wanting to write, will it be successful? And that indicates to me that if I was to tell them, no, it won't, they won't fucking do it. So it's like, you mean to tell me that you have this burning passion that's, that's like a fire burning in your soul, and you're going to rob yourself of that because it won't make you money right. no i'm i'm gonna go i'm gonna go do some shit that i hate for money i'm not gonna do this thing that fucking lights my soul on fire right that's the unwiring that we have to to get people to understand especially in this new world we're moving into right we're moving into a world that in the next 10 to 20 years that whole system is going bye-bye and that's yes that's going to require a lot of re-education of the masses too i think you hit something that I'd like to expand on, which is if I think of this card, it's these people understand where things are going to. So somebody might be lit up about something that we obviously know won't be here in years to come, two or three years. It's like, if you just look at the past, it's like there's so many jobs that are no longer around just from the 50s through the 90s, let's say. Like, mm -hmm. fucking, it's stupid the amount that are mm -hmm. gone. Whereas, like, you know, people are upset of, like, people like, well, why did these people in tech 20 years ago do so well? It's like, well, they were able to see, well, the computers finally made it to the house now. <laughs> right. And like, okay. Like, Oh, the internet's about to come out. We might as well start building things that are based upon that. Okay. So now where you're at now is I think super important because I feel like it's like, where does that combine to where, you know, intuitively where that future is going. You have to be adaptable too. fixed in the nature of the mission, spiritually, the commitment, but flexible in the ability of how to do the work and be willing to be open enough to transmute the energy to where it continues to evolve and flow. Because if you be, this card can also be like, no, I'm stuck. I'm only going to be a blacksmith. My daddy was a blacksmith. My daddy's daddy was a blacksmith. It's like, yeah, okay. Maybe you could be a blacksmith still, but like, 
we need blacksmiths to be able to fucking make cool shit and bend fucking metals and do shit that we need. But like, are you doing that for the future too? In a way, like instead of like, I just want it to always be the nostalgic old way to be mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, it's like how many more secretaries are left on typewriters? Well, none. No, they're on a computer. Oh wait, no, most secretaries now are AI. Mm hmm. Or customer service is AI. Like that's yeah. in the last year, it's been like 60% wipe out of those services to AI. So like you have to look at, I think your own purpose too with this card and be like, does this allow me to connect? So you might be saying that you like it. Cause I like, when I hear you say uh, the passion and the fire, I remember I had that about my old jobs. Doesn't mean that that's the fire that truly burned inside me. Mm -hmm because it didn't connect me to where I really wanted to go. Like I wanted, I want, I was working as a parts manager and it was like, and I had a boat dealer and I was lucky, but I was doing astrology while I had the time off while I was in the winter and it was not a lot of customers. But then I was also looking out at like my life in DJ world and in astrology. And it was like, well, this, this doesn't connect to those places. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's right. So it's like how, how can you try and sit? And I think that the number one reading that comes through over my fucking 12 plus years is like, how do I finally make the transition? It's like, mm. that's like the number one. Yeah. I would say reading is like, yeah. tell me when it is. And it's so weird because the astrology will always be like one, you're already behind. It already has been pushing you the whole time. <laughs> yeah. That's usually, and I'm not just saying that as a random, like I, I will, I will show them and show them like, see when this happened, see mm -hmm. when this planet came here. And then I will even remind them without knowing their story, but knowing and be like, you had an option here to do it. Why didn't you do it? Yeah. Uh, because, oh, because of this weird person that came in in that relationship, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, what's happening right now? Same thing. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> oh. Like, usually people are looking so forward to win when what I find in astrology is like, Oh, no, 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 no. Unless somebody's a light worker, usually be like, okay, no, yeah, you've still got these evolutionary things that are happening and you're finishing this and then that's the next round. But people who are on the fence, it's always majority of the time astrologically, which would be an interesting like uh, astrological research to, to show the astrology community is like, no, 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 no. So many events have been happening that they didn't jump mm -hmm. that they're behind. Yeah. Like you, you already could have done it, but your fear took over. And so how are you going to get to a place like this? If you're in the fear of yourself jumping out of a place to where you really are going to be lit up that connects to everywhere you really want to go in your life. Because that's, I think the hard part is the matrix biggest trap, which I think yeah. the beginnings of really the teachings of it was the system in the, especially in what job you do, mm -hmm. right? It's like, yeah, that, that, that circles back to exactly what I was talking about a minute ago about how, you know, most people are in this mentality where they are looking forward to a day where they can do nothing. So when people ask me that question, I'll tell them, you want to know how to make the transition? It's not necessarily going to be a fun transition, but you spend, first of all, you have to give yourself permission because most people yeah. don't even do that, but you spend every spare minute of your time doing whatever it is that lights your soul on fire. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care how stupid you look. <laughs> I don't care. I don't give a damn what it is you want to do. Whatever that thing is that, that it's burning deep, deep down in there, deep down in there that you've been suppressing your whole life. Give yourself full permission every spare moment of your time. On your day off, don't be laying on your ass watching Netflix. Right. Be, be, be dumping all of your energy into this thing and spend every spare penny that you have investing on whatever this is. Right. And just give yourself permission to do it. Not to try to make money and chase money. That'll come later. Give yourself permission to dump all of your energy into this. And when you start doing that, you're on the path. So what's happening now is that you're carving out a new timeline. And if you stay on this path, the universe is going to start guiding you in the right direction. And eventually, you're going to go through probably something scary, probably a tower moment, because you're making a frequency change now. It's a real right. slow frequency change. But if you spend every spare minute of your time and every spare penny that you have investing on this, whatever this is you want to do, 
eventually, when you make enough of a frequency change, the universe is going to start ripping shit out of your life. So you might go through a scary transition. It might come in the form of loss of a job. You might, it could come in the form of you having to get kicked out of where you live. And it could be a messy, ugly transition. But, you know, you have to trust the process. But most of the people, like you said, are, are behind. They should have done it a long time ago. So, so yeah, yeah that, that's, it's, it all comes back to that fucking matrix trap. It does. I was going to say that if you're really in the work, do you ever lose a job? I don't think you do because you're always on the job. Yeah. But if you're in a position to where you feel like you lose a job and that's the end of your life or existence or whatever, you're not on it. You're not actually in a job. You're in a fucking trap mm -hmm. because there's no losing the job. The mission is always the mission. Projects might be lost. Money might go up and down, but these things can be changed. I remember when I first started this, it was like first thing I had cut out of my life was marijuana because I was like, I can't, you know, I was, I started doing readings and I remember I was stoned and I remember being like, wasn't that they were bad readings, but I felt like I was missing that extra pop. And I just felt, well, I'll be real. I got the calling from fucking while I was stoned, fucking my angels came through and were like, you need to fucking stop that shit now. <laughs> if you're going to do this shit, I'm like, okay, that was hard. I had smoked weed fucking most of my life. And I was like 26 and I'm like, okay. So I quit. And then I quit Starbucks because I was spending like five bucks at Starbucks in the morning. And then I was like spending, I don't know, fuck 20 to 30 bucks on weed a day. If you really break it down. And I took all that money and I just, then finally, I remember buying that fucking first camera, which was like two sixty nine for a Canon, just like, you know, handy, like cam instead of using my webcam. And I remember being like, man, that is a lot of money. I remember that 269 bucks was a lot of money, but I was like, I saved all that money by not buying weed and not going to Starbucks. And I like how you said, you put it into what you really are. That camera then turned into that big moment of that computer that I bought. That was like a thousand bucks. I remember being like a thousand bucks just for the desktop, not even a monitor. That computer built my whole business to where it's at today. Like in a long time ago, but you know, it's like, then it just starts going boom, 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 boom. And there's no real loss of job. Yeah. Right. Like, the work's never over. The job is always there. It's like if we were if we were to use above as so below, right? As above, so below would be like, does God quit his job on you? <laughs> Did he lose his job? Like, yeah. you know, no, nope, you know, I'm off the job now. So David and Rich, you guys, sorry. <laughs> not looking out for you, your families, your friends, not using that ideology that's not even really an ideology but a divine truth should have you be able to see am i connecting with something that's bridging me because to me this card's also a bridge it's a bridge to others that are going to be solid that get you to places that take you farther is your job taking you to a place? But everybody, you know what? They've done it now to like, how far up the executive ladder can you go? Yeah. And then, ooh, I'm going to jump from that to government or I'm going to jump from that to another bigger business I really want to be at. So when people say, no, I love doing this, it's like, do you really or do you love the jump constantly to yeah. what you think is the next coolest thing <laughs> where at any moment, you know, you're not the cool thing and then you're 50 and then you're going to be 55, 60 waiting for Social Security and doing those last three years before you take it early or you take it as a Walmart greeter. Which I actually have nothing against Walmart greeters. I think they're huge. You know, most of the Walmart greeters I've ever met in my life, they all are doing it because they're already retired and they yeah. love doing it to be with people and to meet with people and to help people. And they just do it for like three or four hours a day. They don't even mm -hmm. do it full time. They're just doing it to help other people and doing it more as a charity work and to be healthy and to be social because in their small towns or whatever, that's how they get to know the town or that's how I just moved here and that's why I'm here. Because I've asked, especially in Arizona, that's where I'm at a lot. And it's like all the Walmart readers, it's fucking, hey, I remember you, David, right? Da, 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 da. Like they know. Yeah. 
So it's like, to me, I don't look at that as like a job they're, they're, because they know it's not a job. They're like, no, I'm here for a purpose because my purpose is mm -hmm. to meet with other people, to find people in my community that I can be associated with, to co-create yep. cool things with and experience life with. Yep. But most people are doing it the opposite. Like, where am I the executive ladder? And where am I? Oh, you know, where am I in sales? You know, oh my gosh, I was the number one salesman of the month. And da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, that was cool for that month. And then there's that competition, which I think this is a card that represents zero competition. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, there's no competition with building the bridges to others to do the great work with. Mm hmm. Right. And that's, I think, the best experience of being a light worker is when you have fully, I think that's a harder program to remove is competition within your own field. But that's where you realize we could be doing so much more together than yeah. against. And there is so much competition in the spiritual community. And I commend you because, you know, we, we know that there are some people out there who, who love to try to claim that. They started all this tarot on YouTube and stuff like that. And, and like being you, the person that pioneered this whole movement, for you to sit back and keep your mouth shut, that's, that's cool. I, I forget I, about it. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know. I, I put myself in your place and I'd be like, what if I was the one that pioneered tarot and astrology on YouTube? And I hear all these people out here trying to claim to be the one who started it. No, it was all me and me, 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 me. Would I be able to keep my mouth shut? You know, <laughs> I just don't understand that, that mentality. Who gives a fuck? There's, there's so much competition and I can, I experienced so much backlash when I first jumped into the spiritual community and on with my YouTube channel, because it started growing really, really, really fast. And then the next thing, you know, I'm having other tarot readers who have, you know, decent sized channels coming to my channel, attacking me because they've been doing it for five years and I've been doing it for eight months and I've already passed their channel up as far as subscribers go. And I'm like, who gives a shit? Is that what you're in this for? Right. I'm not, I'm, my goal is not right now. I don't even know how many subscribers I have. I stopped counting that. I know it constantly grows. It hasn't stopped growing, but I don't give a fuck. I'm not here to be the most subscribed tarot reader on YouTube. Right. You know? I'm, I'm here to, to, to send a message to empower people and help people. And yeah, zero competition. Again, they're going to fucking fall off next year. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that, you know, it wasn't me only, right? It was like, we were lucky. I was lucky to find soul garden back in the day with Chris Wateki and like build a tribe of light back in the day. And all of us that really, heard the call start putting it out together so it was like we felt very innovative and exciting and like we were in our own little private little world that people didn't understand and there was no competition we never even looked like it like competition and you know it was it was weird because i just put some reels up this year of like way back like 2011 videos and shit that was kind of relevant to now. And we were just having the best time on like Google Hangouts when it came out or like speaking about light work pre 2012 was just not in at all. Like go look up the amount of blogs about 2012. They're very little. Well, that's when it all first started, you know? Yeah. It was very little. And I, I, I'm blessed that I was one of those blogs that was putting it out there and then finally turned it to video for me. Actually, you know, it's my, well, at least just this channel, my YouTube channel, this one, I, I, my first one's 2006, but this one was December 7th, 2011. So, you know, this one's coming up on 12 years, right? So where it's been just like, oh, okay, all the work from the blogs and all the shit fucking prior and the experimentation with it became more official 12 years ago. But to throw the experiments out, like the show I did last night, Spiritual Dance Music, I shot that shit October 2009, and you couldn't live stream on YouTube. Yeah. Let alone there wasn't even a YouTube app, but I was on you, you stream, you, yeah, you, Ustream.tv, which now got bought out by IBM. 
And it was one viewer, two viewers, because most people, their internet wasn't fast enough to watch. <laughs> and talking astrology and doing um, uh, DJing was like, people thought I was crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. But it was fun. Because I feel like that's how, where it becomes into building cool shit that's ever been done. We have a lot of cool shit to go build out there, man. Yeah. And I think people have to realize that too. And and you can't put yourself down about jobs. You learn something from all of them. Like if I didn't learn the skills of being a parts manager and how to manage parts and, you know, make SKU numbers and, you know, actually take an old fucking company and computerize it because they were using fucking paper and it was just post-it notes everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm fucking losing my mind and convinced the owners to get a computer in 2003 or 2004 was like, <gasps> It's going to cost $4,000 because with a cash drawer and a computer and to skew the numbers and all that. And they were like, but I'm like, watch how much money I'll make you guys. Yeah. And they trusted me and I proved it to them. And they were like, oh my God, why haven't we ever do this before? And that carried over to now. Carried right? over to now. Yeah. 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 And that, that goes back to another question I get all the time. How do I find my life's purpose? The first question I'll ask you, if you come to me and ask me that question, I'll hit you with a question and I'll ask you, what makes you think you're not already living it? Right. Why does everybody get this idea that, that they only have one thing they're supposed to be doing and they haven't figured it out yet? But like you said, you know, if, if you hadn't learned these things and these, the jobs you had in the past, you wouldn't be here today. So I ask people, I'm like, what makes you think you're not already on the right path, living your purpose? You have to start seeing that first. Right. You have to start realizing, oh, I am living my life's purpose. I, I, I remember I started thinking, I was living in the fucking homeless shelter, as a matter of fact, when I started realizing to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. Every person I bump into, I alter the trajectory of their path. I, I change your whole day just by stopping and having a five-minute conversation with you. And because I changed your day, that's going to alter the path of everybody you interact with. Holy fuck, I already make a big difference. I started yeah. realizing that in the homeless shelter. So then the universe starts handing you more evidence that supports what you believe. Right. So, so it's it, to kind of trail off of what you said there, you know, you can't be ashamed of where you're at right now because all you have to do is start seeing it and start trusting the process and it'll start making sense. It'll lead you toward your highest calling if you make that leap. Yeah, and I would say that maybe it would only be a shame. <laughs> it would be like, I remember when I went for my first job, it was like, I remember the first places I applied was like a French bakery and I went there and I, it was like my first interview and I looked around and I saw it and I just was like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this. <laughs> I was like 15. I'm like, and no, no, me in the kitchen just doesn't <laughs> operate that great. And then it was like a cold stone, which I did. It was the first cold stone ever made. Cold stones. Bomb. The first one though. Like it was just one store. Yeah. And that's where I worked. But like, I didn't really like ice cream, so I got kicked out within three weeks. <laughs> you don't like ice cream? No, I do like ice cream, oh. but it's not my fire inside that oh, burns, okay. right? I'm not Joe Biden, like, all day. <laughs> Even though, you know, I have drumsticks back there. I fucking love yeah. drumsticks. But <laughs> it, was, it was really, like, when I got out of the military, and I was like, what am I going to fucking do? And I was in prison, and I'm like, I still didn't know. I didn't get a cool insight like you in the homeless shelter. In prison, I didn't get any insights except like, I can't wait to get out and I'm out of the military and I'm free to find, I was like seeking. But right when I got back to reality, it was like, oh no, 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 no. Now it's in the newspaper back then, like fucking looking for jobs. And the only one I went on an interview for is the one I got where it's like part assistance on the beach working on boats. I'm like, well, I love the beach. So I keep it simple. I love the beach and I love boats. I've been in boating my whole life. I'm going to go to that. That's going to be the job I want to do. And I got that job. And then I think about my life and I go, I just do what I love. I always was filming videos. I was blogging before we even knew it was blogging. And videos from me in 2000 in my bedroom showing like which chick I'm dating <laughs> and saying, I probably convinced you to watch this video because I never conceived that somebody could watch a video yeah. on their own <laughs> that I would have to show you the video. Yeah. Right. So it's like, 
all I had to do was just do what I only, my, my heart enjoys doing. Like I love video and computers and I love astrology and I mm -hmm. love So if you really break down your life and what you do, it's like, yeah. wow, that's a trip. It's just <laughs> the little things you really love to do. That's it. I never even thought about that. That's so funny that you brought that up. Cause I used to do the same shit when I was a kid. Right. My grandpa had this fucking one of them little camcorder things. Yeah. You stick the tape in. Yeah. I would take that thing in my room and just set it up and make little videos. Right. And, and look at what I'm eating. I'm eating some Krispy Kreme donuts and I would just talk to the camera and talk about what I was doing that day. And, and I would do that. And I, I never even connected those dots. That's funny. I spent my whole childhood doing that. That's fucked up. So I, I did too. About that. Wow. Yeah, and then That's forcing the your friends to watch it <laughs> yeah. because nobody else is going to watch it by yourself because yeah. you want to see people's reaction <laughs> to just the most stupid, mundane shit. It yeah. wasn't like anything inspirational except talking about yourself. Like, yeah. You know, like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. and that's where it's like, that's. Well, that's, and it was the same thing. Mine was my grandfather's that my dad then got passed down, right? Mm -hmm. My grandfather would always be like, he was the one who had the money, right? He was retired. So he'd be like, oh, this is the, from like 89. Here you go. My dad would take it. Then my dad would finally get then the next like, ooh, he has a big VHS, like JVC yeah, yeah, one yeah, now. Yeah. And I would be like, oh, can I have that one, dad? He's like, yeah, things a piece of shit. I'm like, great. Fucking with the, well, you put the tape in and then it had the yeah. wire hooking up to the fucking camera. Yeah. That's what I had too. And I had that thing set in my room, fuck it up. And I fucking just talked to it. Mm -hmm. And I would talk about what was happening. I would give the date like today. It's yeah. fucking April. I have it all. I actually converted all to digital. Yeah. And I was so embarrassed. I'm even embarrassed to watch it now, <laughs> you know, because it's like totally puberty me. Yeah, like yeah. my voice is like ah, different, mm -hmm. <laughs> but little did I know the whole time. I feel like our divine nature is coming out the whole time. Yeah. And, 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 and then that's the matrix that pulls you away from that idea of doing it. But I, but I remember my first job interviews, like, am I really going to work at French's bakery? No, I don't want to bake. I don't want to bake. I don't want to go sit there and I, I already envisioned in my mind already seeing the customers like on a busy Sunday for, I was thinking in my head, like holidays, what is that going to be like sitting here being like, here's your fucking, you know, cake for your daughter oh here's your easter cake here's your like you know here's this fucking i was just like oh no that that would just be like that would be hell <laughs> that would be hell you guys didn't get the right fucking frosting on it i remember that in my head like young and then there was an opportunity to like there i i had a lot of friends that were girls so I remember one of my friends she was working at before Ulta or any of those things it was like some fucking thing and guys were working there and this is before like gay guys worked at that shit like and i was like no i just don't want to work at a girl's like thing yeah. i'm not gonna do that and i remember being like where is there to go so the one job i did take that i was there for only a week was i worked for gallup poll which okay. is like the call center and they, they'll do polls online even for presidencies or whatever but mm. it's called gallup poll where like <clears throat> i'm having to do 180 calls a day and I'm having to get like surveys, you know, like call up some house, have the name, be like, is Mrs. Thomas home? This is her. Hi, this is David um, with Gallup Poll for Nabisco products. I, I know that you like Nabisco. Would you mind taking a quick survey for me? I felt like I was like kind of in like, um, God, what's his fucking name? But it was hilarious. I, I felt like that like kind of way of approaching these old ladies to get them to do surveys was so much because I had just seen the movie, um, not Billy Madison, the, uh, well, the one where he's the golfer, fucking Adam Sandler. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore <laughs> and how what's his name is the fucking guy running all the old people in there. Oh, fucking. Yeah. Um, what ben is Stiller. It? Ben Stiller yeah. when he's like fucking making them do arts and crafts. And he's like, yeah. oh, he's like, who's ready for yard duty today? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we're going to be pushing out these quilts all day. Yeah. No more fucking, you seem to be on extra duty today. And then he's on the phone. He's like, yeah, I'll get the fucking quilts there. Fucking, yeah. okay. Right? Like, I felt like that being like, yeah, are you ready to do a survey over at Nabisco? <laughs> so I would literally do like, do you like tricks or... Nabisco, uh, those little crackers, the fucking buttery ones or whatever. I like the buttery ones. Okay. 
once I got that in the computer, why? And then write it down. And I would get paid based upon how many I got to answer the phone and take the whole survey. And if they hung up in the middle, you don't get paid. So it was like. Couldn't just make some shit up. No, because they have it all fucking hooked up. Back then in 2002, they had it all hooked up fucking to where like it was like a more DOS style fucking program, but it was like that motherfucking phone was connected to the computer. And the mm -hmm. second the fucking computer fucking saw that the phone hung up, it would just fucking erase the thing and put me in the next person and show as incomplete. Oh, I had no control over it. Hmm. But yeah, and, and I remember being like, that's what made me join the Navy because I was like, well, I fucking don't want to do that. But again, I, I, I actually thought, I think people, when it comes to this fire that burns inside them, I think I want to do this. Like, this looks cool, but a, a TV commercial convinced me. Like, the Navy commercials, this Metallica playing fucking with badass fucking F-18s <laughs> flying on a fucking aircraft carrier. I was like, well, that looks a lot cooler than fucking going to college. So, but that obviously was not the thing. So I feel like people, I understand though why people are confused. But I think they need to look at the kind of energy they're around. And, you know, if like everybody's going to college, like I remember being like, I don't want to do that. It didn't feel right the same way that I didn't want to work at a bakery. Yeah. Yeah. I did that a few times. I, you know, I actually, that's funny because I went to college twice, both times, an automobile accident forced me to stop going. <clears throat> the first time I was almost killed. And that, I think I told you about that. I was in that fucking car that flipped down. A hill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just was out partying, hanging out with friends. And <clears throat> next thing I know, I'm in an ambulance. What the fuck? So fucked up, I couldn't go back to school. So finally, I went. Do you remember even getting hit? I don't remember anything. We were cruising around. And then the next thing I know, I'm looking up at the sky. Oh, yeah. And then I'm being slid into an ambulance. And there's paramedics wiping me down. They're saying, sir, do you know your name? Do you know what day of the week it is? you know who the president of the United States is? I'm like, dude, why are you asking me all these stupid questions? What's going on? You were just in a really bad accident. I was like, what? I was in a car that flipped down a hill end over end. Apparently, the back tire slid off the road. It was going down a windy What kind hill. of car was it? A Nissan 300ZX. Oh. Yeah. And Were you in the... Was it the two seaters or the four seaters or the two? It was the four seaters. It was the two little seats in the back. Yeah, the two little seats in the back. And and it was this whole big to do because I did drive that car that night, but my memory serves that we came back to the house and kept drinking and then or, or I don't really know what happened. All I know is that I lost every friend that I had that night because they said that I wrecked that car. But the police investigated it. <clears throat> there was a seatbelt wound on my right shoulder, and it snapped this collarbone. This arm is still fucked up, and my bicep is still numb up here. And they said they found the other guy's shoe on the brake pedal. So they said that the police report said that that dude wrecked the car. So he's the one that took the fall for it. But every friend that I had in middle school abandoned me over that because they said that I wrecked it. I don't know. I have no clue what happened, but I was laid up in bed for like three months. Couldn't, couldn't go back to school after that. And, and the job that I was going to be interview, interviewed for the very next day was put on hold for three months. And it was, it was a crazy, crazy to do. I don't remember anything. It was fucking nuts. And I'm wondering, see, I often have these, these, these thoughts of, I wonder if maybe I had like a walk-in experience yeah, or what, because you would think that I would at least remember the car going off the road or something. I don't. The car, apparently, according to the police report, the car was laying on its top, and me and the other dude were outside the car. And apparently, he was incapacitated, but I was walking around talking. Don't remember none of it. The only thing I remember is looking up at the sky, and what, what woke me up was when they lifted the gurney. Because I'm looking up at the stars, and I feel myself being lifted up, and I hear a click. And then I feel, and I'm being slid into the ambulance. I don't, I don't feel no pain. I have no clue what's going on. And I look down, and I'm covered in mud and blood. I had no fucking clue. I still, to this day, have no memory of what happened that night. It was wild. 
Fucking crazy. How many, how many, how many times did that car roll down the hill? You think? Uh, I don't know. Um, well, it it because we, we retraced three times. <laughs> well, what it did, it went off the road and then hit a ditch and then it ramped up in the oh. air. And you could see where it went through the top of a tree. It went over a tree. It oh, took out the limbs shit. on the top of a tree and then flipped end over end apparently. And it went down. I think across three yards. Three people's yards. You could see where it had rolled over across three yards. And I mean, the fact that your collarbone on the right side, that would make more sense because even in the driver's seat, it would hit the left yeah. more on, the, on any impact. And if his shoe was in the fucking driver's seat it's not like that shoe would just magically fly into the because especially in a driver's seat where the pedals are that's the part to where a shoe is gonna sit you know what i mean like this was i mean it was it it was definitely some kind of crazy like yeah yeah. there was some kind of timeline dimension slip or something because none of that night makes sense i do remember driving that car that's one of the last things that i remember doing but all the evidence from the crash pointed to the other guy. Hmm. So I don't know. I, there's a part of me that feels like, yeah, I'm the one that was, wrecked was, that car. was Rich Lop, Lop the one in charge. No, you got the Empress card. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I Rich did not. Rich was not <laughs> the guy who did it. I was think- there a girl in that car driving? No. no. Or was no. that guy like a prima donna? <laughs> Well, here's the funny thing. Was he the one who like tried to run everybody in the group and all that shit? Was he a little prima donna empress? (laughs) Here's the funny thing about that Uh, guy. That dude. And here's another reason why all my friends. And he got Queen of Cups reversed. He's a little fucking sad. Little couldn't take care of himself. Need to have his friends. So the funny thing about that dude, (laughs) and this is the reason why my friends abandoned me that night. Because about a year prior to this, that dude was in a really bad wreck where he got serious brain damage and the dude his best friend sitting next to him got cut in half and killed and so this dude he's he talked like this and he's real slow you know because he was already almost killed in a wreck and so the the idea that i almost killed him in a wreck is what made all my friends like abandon me he was Used to be this real mean, intimidating, mm. fucking angry dude that, that, that you know was everybody was scared of, but now he was just like this kind of incapacitated, like special needs type person because he had brain damage. So it was a really fucked up situation. I think back, and the only thing I can think is there's some kind of timeline dimension slip where I think I may have even gotten killed on one timeline, and I was brought back to a different parallel time timeline because i wasn't allowed to leave or something i don't even know dude i don't know still a mystery to me to this day crazy i i like that uh mystery part of it all but again i think it's a good example of like three of pentacles like obviously those weren't the right people to be in your life and then it also stopped you from going to a job interview which might have been the worst timeline ever that's that actually, for you could have gone down you that's know what actually I mean? fucking cool because what see i was being interviewed to work at ups the ups world headquarters in louisville kentucky i was originally going to go work inside and load the semi trucks and i called them the next day i said i was in a real bad accident last night and they said well we'll put it on hold for you so i was laid up in bed for three months the day the doctor released me to work they called me both happened on the same day it was weird and i was like i was just about to call you all the doctor just released me today and she said Well, the position that we had for you has been filled. However, we have another position for you outside on the air ramps, loading and unloading the actual airplanes. Would you take that position? I said, fuck yeah, dude. And I worked that job for about four years and I loved it. And, And it's like that was meant to be. So that's thinking back on that. It's like, did that happen for a reason? Was that supposed to happen that way or? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, or did 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 I accidentally just take a really wrong timeline, and the only way to get me back on the right timeline was to do that? I don't know. I mean, I, I for me, I, when I was in prison, was when the idea of the way for me to get to the job that eventually would get me to here opened, 
the idea while I was in prison. It would have never happened if I would have not at the right time. Finally, after prison, I had to get decommissioned, which takes months. Like just to get out of the military, once you're done with your, once they're ready, you're saying you're going to get taken out and you serve your time, then it takes two months. So I'm sitting on base for two months, not even looking at what I'm going to do until I get out. Like I, my only goal is to get out, right? Like the fucking movie, like get the fuck out. And fucking by the time I got out and by the time that the newspaper came in front of me, it was the first ad that they had run. So it was the perfect moment hmm. that I never would have gotten through that little, it was a little ad too. It wasn't one of the bigger ads. It was just like a little fucking ad that, you know, I don't know if you remember, but back in the paper looking for jobs, like sometimes those li the little basic ones, the cheapest ones that people would take out, you would mm. automatically go, well, they probably don't offer that much money. It didn't say how much it offered money wise, Yeah. but that was the one I called. I didn't do the one that was like back then in 2004, it would be like, shit, fucking, you know, minimum wage, or you would always try and get the one that's like 10 bucks an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh man, I want 10 bucks an hour. Yeah. Right. But, but that one was fucking cool. Cause it was like, it ended up being like 12. And then it was like, fuck when I became the manager, it became 16. Then I went to 20 all by the time I was 19 years old. It was a lot back then. Fuck. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I was making almost hundred K a year fucking at 19. I was like, and I got commission of all the sales. But again, that's the perfect timing. And I feel like, you know, when you're doing what's meant to be for you, that's what has to happen. But I feel like also at the same time, every bad scenario in my life was always around when I was around the wrong people, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that the three of pentacles to me can be very relatable to the three of cups in the sense of like, I, I think we covered the three of cups. Great. Cause that's very, you know, in, in moments of celebration can turn twisty and weird. Remembering that celebrations like that are meant to be used I don't want to say sparingly, but like in the real essence of what they're meant to be, not try and live that as your life 24 seven. Yeah. But I feel like this is more of a universal daily foundational card of like, if, if I'm around this energy, I'm going to be able to continue to expand with others and continue the movement of light work and everything else will divinely come together and orchestrate it opposed to trying to force it or seeking it in an unknown place, but in drawing it in from spirit more so, you know? Yeah. 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 It's, I mean, it's, it's a real good energy. We just have to keep this in mind going into the times that we're going into now, you know, things are going to get crazy. I know they're already warming us up, you know, a couple of banks fail I know. here and there. They're, they're getting us ready next year. It's going to be nuts. So, I mean, we, 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 we got to keep that in mind. To be able to come together and like what you were saying um off camera a little bit ago about you know what what people can do if they all stand up together yeah over the 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 uh, AI open thing. ai like 500 people out of 750 employees all stood up for the ceo being out and brought that they were able to bring him back in a new board because like that is kind of interesting he was saying really positive things about AI because I think we're dealing with bad and good parts of it. And the news is trying to say that the outs were saying that there was something bad when really he was saying there was something good. Yeah. And to me, I listened to 500 voices standing up saying, no, keep them. It's something good happening with it more than I do 500 people trying to stand up for somebody who's doing something bad. Like, I don't think 500 people are going to stand up for Bill Gates yeah, <laughs> and quit their job. You know what I mean? most people will just be like, whatever. So that that's where I think it's kind of like an interesting thing of like when people all stand up, which I think people are going to need to, whether they're in their job or not. Oh yeah. When the shit gets really weird. I mean, you see it right now in unions, right? But again, that's again for pay. And not about, and I guess you can attach principle to it, but there's the principles off well, my value of my work. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, I think that's different. And, and some people might disagree and I, and I would understand it too, but I, but I'm, I think that what we're talking about here is, is the spiritual like essence. Now there, there might be things like, of course, with cars or for example, those are big, important things in people's lives. Mm -hmm. 
Like it was weird just this weekend, Volkswagen, which is one of the oldest companies, made in 1937, just came out and said, we are no longer a company that can be competitive in the car market because not only is it too expensive, but we also don't make a product that's good anymore. What? Yeah. I said that? Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa. What kind of statement is that? No, I, I mean, it's a statement of preparing people that... I mean, Volkswagen owns Porsche. Volkswagen owns a lot of these big companies, but their own product, their their own product, sucks. <laughs> and they don't even have the faith yeah, that they can improve. Yeah. No, I mean, I think what that signals is usually like, who wants to buy us? Oh, okay. and take over our our bigger companies. Oh like Porsche and so forth that, you know, cause most people don't realize like Porsche is owned by Volkswagen. So it's like, you know, all these kind of things. Right. And, and I think that's kind of the, the future is like people are starting to put out like, yeah, this is, this is where it really is. But to me, I find that as an honest thing, like, you know, whereas people, I think three of pentacles would also be like people who are trying to flex, like, Oh, look at how good I am. And I think we covered that, but it's like, I, I feel like people who are just raw and real of where they've been, so I trust, and usually the best work comes out. And I always feel like, you know, we're all challenged in life, but the best challenges are what make us do the best things, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, it was a great show, brother. Yeah. It was a good one. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll speak to you soon. We're, we got a lot of cool ideas of the big shifts with this show. We just got to finish a couple of them. We're almost there, but... It's been fun teaching everybody the tarot cards and looking at it from a spiritual way and talking about it all in different ways, but there's definitely the awakening experience keeps awakening and keeps expanding. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's going to be some, some cool things to come. Cause I mean, we only have a deck of tarot cards. And, I know. And we've, man, you got to think about it. When, well, let's see, I first came here to the studio last December. It was almost a year ago. We first started working together. When did we do our first episode of this? Like in April? Yeah. It's fucking right around the corner. I know. Pew! You know? So there's limited tarot cards, but there's so much more shit that we could talk about. And it very well may end up getting to a point where there's more important things to talk about than the tarot, you know? so Of course. Plus, I want to look at having guests as well at some point. Yep. Bring some people in, you know, get a third person here at the table to put their two cents in and yeah. i yeah i agree it's gonna be fun or we just make the show where i just just pull tarot cards and be like was rich the one that did the car rack was rich <laughs> the one that took the food from the homeless people in the shelter <laughs> king of one reverse he was <laughs> i'll be the maury no i'm just kidding but yeah there's so many cool things that's what we've been there's been a lot of stuff happening but that's what's kind of funny. Three of Pentacles in the kind of, not the shadows, because that's a dark thing, but in the light, like in the background of the light. You want to do your great work before you put it out and do it in a good way, you know? Mm -hmm. You just don't want to like, you know, buy a pendulum and never used one and then just be like out there doing, what if somebody who's just doing YouTube videos of pendulums all day? Like my daily, should you die? <laughs> yes. You don't want to be doing that. So. Yeah. Anyway, well, make sure you follow us. Rich's links down below. Much love to you all. And we'll see you all wherever we see you next. Adios.